Well, I'm going to present uh, uh, tonight is really uh, our integration, open control integration with uh, CloudStack. It's a, it's a really first phase, and I'll be talking about other stuff that we're planning to do as a next step. Uh, I also have uh, uh, Sashin here with me, who is one of our developers, and who will be able to answer all the detailed questions if uh, you have any. And uh, James was helping with all the you know, partners' uh, engagements and so on. So uh, my name is Milan Markovic. I'm uh, uh, a product management uh, uh, for SDN within Juniper. And we kind of released uh, 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 open uh, uh, Contrail, and that's kind of one of our products. So I like to start with uh, what we're trying to do before I start going into how we're trying to do this. This is going to be short. So, uh, from the Juniper perspective, or with Open Contrail, we really target, try to target uh, virtual private cloud uh, market and uh, data center. And within, uh, very, uh, we uh, early we realized, you know, talking to the customers, that the, our virtual private cloud discussions are converging more towards kind of multi-cloud uh, and uh, hybrid cloud. And this is where, from the requirements perspective, we are kind of looking at. And we will we'll talk about it uh, later. On the open source side, we were the, have been the users of open source for a long time. And uh, every uh, software product that you know, Juniper produces has multiple open source components included. Uh, and this is kind of the uh, new uh, venture into new territory for us to uh, start con actively contributing uh, to open source. It started last year with uh, uh, our release of Open Control as uh, open source uh, uh, SDN controller. We are also actively involved with Open Daylight. We provide uh, contributions now with CloudStack and also with OpenStack. So. Uh, Given that it's kind of, we go, we're going to all these kind of early uh, phases that uh, you're probably already familiar with and uh, working with in open stack, uh, you know, in open source uh, for a while. Uh, one of the uh, problem, initial problems we had with open contrail was that uh, we couldn't release graphical user interface because we had some license components. So we're kind of le slowly learning those intricacies of dealing with open source and maintaining it and you know, contributing, going through the whole process. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Open Contrail, it's uh, kind of we as a Juniper worked on uh, high-end, uh, high-performance networks for, for a long time. And we wanted to uh, apply the same methodology to SDN uh, solution, use the same uh, technology that we are using for those uh, uh, high-end networking solutions in, uh, for SDN. And that's why we built uh, you know, SDN controller as it is today. We'll talk, we'll talk about the details later. But our motivation uh, to kind of integrate with uh, uh, cloud, uh, cloud stack and provide integrated solution is really to enable those uh, uh, features within the open control within the cloud stack and uh, help kind of the overall solution. Uh, so, it seems that it's part of it. Is it visible or readable? Should I just move it? Okay. And if you have any questions, please interrupt. Let's keep this interactive. It's, it's Friday. Uh, afternoon, so we don't need to keep this formal. So the way we see kind of SDN uh, controller uh, 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 as a solution, we see it as kind of four uh, layers. Uh, the, the top uh, orchestration layer, automation, and kind of basically the management layer that helps the uh, kind of glue the whole uh, solution together. And CloudStack is one of the orchestration solutions we are working with. Uh, the control plane uh, where uh, 
uh, that's normally separated with SDN. In our uh, case, it is uh, implemented using BGP protocol as a proven standard uh, protocol for large-scale uh, networking deployments and provides kind of federated uh, uh, controller infrastructure. We'll talk about that uh, later. And our networking uh, layer is based on uh, virtual network overlays. And we support uh, MPLS over GRE, MPLS over UDP, VXLAN, and uh, e uh, VPN as uh, uh, encap encapsulation uh, options or tunneling options for ne uh, network overlays. So why is the uh, why are the virtual network uh, networks important for or overlays for SDN solutions? In the standard uh, network deployments, uh, the like for both kind of cloud in cloud and the data center environment, multi-tenancy is really one of the key features. Currently, uh, VLAN-based or security-based. Uh, 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 separation is used to separate kind of the tenants and provided multiple tenants within uh, the standard uh, networking environments. It is not, there are kind of two issues with uh, that approach. Like the, the first one, it's not scalable. And the second one is that uh, uh, whenever you change anything at the uh, virtual uh, network, you have to kind of, those changes affect the physical network because you have to configure those VLANs on the physical network. With the uh, virtual overlay network, that uh, uh, separation, multi-tenant separation, is provided within the virtual network. Every virtual network is instantiated as a completely isolated uh, network. And that's kind of by default. You can connect them if you want with the specific policies connecting those networks. But that isolation is provided by default. So you can share the same IP addresses uh, within virtual networks, and they're not they're completely working as uh, isolated networks. Additionally, they because they're created as virtual networks, they are completely separated from the physical network. So when you configure a virtual network, when you modify the configuration of the virtual network, you don't need to change the configuration of the physical network. It doesn't affect it at all. And that helps with uh, uh, isolating the uh, failures also. So any failure within the physical network, if it's correctly uh, implemented, is not going to affect your virtual network and vice versa. Uh, and uh, the last uh, kind of physical network that's used as a transport, that uh, uh, physical network is still required, but in the uh, overlay scenario that the only requirement for physical network is to provide basically IP fabric uh, with uh, non non blocking low latency uh, support. Uh, so at the, uh, at a high level, I'm not going to talk about cloud stack. You are very familiar with cloud stack. We'll we'll touch uh, on that integration a little bit more later. But you know, within the kind of networking uh, solution, uh, Open Contrail uh, includes two key components. Uh, one is the Open Contrail SDN controller that's uh, included over there, and the uh, V router uh, that runs as a part of the hypervisor. Uh, the uh, Open Contrail SDN controller is. Uh, uh, software-based, uh, kind of just a VM, uh, 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 and uh, it's basically implementing distributed uh, SDN controller that's kind of logically uh, centralized. And I'll, I'll talk about it uh, in more details later. Uh, VRouter is, uh, basically includes two components, VRouter uh, uh, agent and VRouter forwarding engine that basically implement uh, kind of vRouter within the hypervisor and help like uh, maintain that mesh of tunnels and maintain the connectivity kind of within the virtual network. In addition to those two components, we have to, everything is running on top of the, or connecting through with the uh, physical network and uh, can be connected to other networks through the standard uh, router as a gateway. 
uh, some of those uh, nodes that are instantiated in the virtual network are uh, service nodes that are, could be VMs running uh, within the same kind of hypervisor or a physical kind of service nodes. So it's kind of similar to uh, cloud stack architecture. You can see the mapping, but it's, uh, we'll talk about the mapping later. Now when we look at uh, uh, inside the SDN controller, uh, it's implemented as a three kind of layers. Uh, control node is uh, uh, responsible to provide uh, SDS, uh, SDN uh, controller functionality and manage those virtual networks. Uh, control nodes communicate amongst themselves using a B standard BGP protocol, so no extensions. The standard BGP protocol is used, and also they can control, the f uh, they can talk to physical kind of routers uh, using the same kind of BGP, standard BGP protocol. We had deployments where uh, Contrail is de uh, deployed with different uh, uh, vendors, routers like Cisco, and, and Alcatel, and everything is working fine. The management plane within the SDN controller is implemented as kind of two layers, configuration node and analytics node. Each of the layers are horizontally, independently horizontally scalable. So if you need more control nodes, you can just instantiate another control VM and, uh, and add more uh, capacity. The same thing like for configuration node or analytics node. Configuration, so the control nodes, they don't have any persistent, they don't store any persistent information. In the case of con uh, control node failure, uh, that is uh, handled by uh, vRouter basically connected to another control node and uh, recovering that uh, information. Every vRouter uh, connects to at least two control nodes for redundancy. Um, so if one control node goes down, the vRouter will uh, mark that information from, from that control node stale, and it'll just recover the information from the other control node. So, so complete uh, uh, HA kind of implementation. And then the fault tolerance is included in, in, in every layer. Configuration nodes uh, keep track of the network configuration. They store all the data. We're using Cassandra a kind of database to uh, uh, store the data. It provides multiple levels of uh, fault tolerance uh, using DHT uh, type of uh, mechanism so that, uh, again, any failure of the configuration node would be completely transparent to the system. The same thing with the analytics node. Analytics nodes are responsible to collect the data and collect the analytics data and expose everything to other high-level systems. Both configuration nodes and analytics node exposed REST APIs, and they're used, we'll talk about that later, but they're used for integration with different orchestration systems and with cloud stack also. So let's look at the, the cloud stack integration. So as I mentioned before, this is uh, kind of the first, our first uh, uh, step in the integration to provide the basic functionality we're hoping to expand the functionality in the, in the future. So we added uh, a standard plugin as a part of the management server, and that plugin is using our REST APIs to communicate to open Contrail and basically manage the kind of virtual network. Uh, the virtual network is, again, implemented using our vRouter, and uh, vRouter is, uh, uh, again, uh, deployed within the Zen host in this, uh, uh, in this example, basically repla replacing OVS. vRouter is a full-featured uh, router that supports both layer th to a layer three communication and is you know, high-end, high-performance uh, router that uh, you know, provides the, the uh, high-performance packet forwarding. We also support K uh, KVM. Uh, hypervisor, and we're going to provide the uh, ESX uh, uh, version in probably a couple of weeks, three to four weeks. Yes, go ahead. Yes, that is the idea. And I'll explain why <coughs> later. Ba basically, this router replaces the OVS. So, yes. Is the router open source or just open? It's open source. Or? It's part of the open control. So as I men mentioned before, there are two components. 
Open Control and vRouter. They're both open source. Mm -hmm. Is it based on Open vSuite or is it totally different? It's, it's completely different. It's, it's based on our uh, kind of routing software that we use to implement the real routers and uh, physical routers. So basically we use the same technology to try to optimize and create a very kind of highly scalable router. And we've done a lot of performance testing and uh, performance is, uh, there is no deterioration in performance on the standard Linux when you run with uh, vRouter. When we replace uh, Linux bridge with vRouter. So you, you just Uh, v router or the, the, the virtual router that you okay. so there are two components within the virtual router uh, similar to kind of standard when you look at the physical routers uh, there is a user agent component within the physical within v router and there is a forwarding engine the user agent is really used to communicate with the higher layers and get all the signal information and routing information so if the user agent fails, the forwarding engine is, is going to continue to forward based on the forwarding tables as they are. They won't, you won't be able to change the tables, but the packets will continue to flow. If the forwarding engine, so once the user agent uh, re is restarted again, then all those forwarding tables are going to be marked stale, but the forwarding engine is going to continue to uh, forward the packets until they're updated. So this is a completely, this is uh, the same functionality as you can find in any standard uh, router, uh, uh, I mean it, right now in the physical router. If, uh, if the forwarding engine fails, then the, the forwarding will be stopped for a while. So it'll be able, basically the forwarding is not going to be available for a while and think it's restarted. Once it's restarted, it will start will continue to forward using the same routing uh, tables that are available at, uh, uh, you know, through the vRouter agent. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so the vRouter is only responsible for routing uh, between the VMs. So let's say if you have an external device like firewall, um, how does the networking work in that case? So vRouter is responsible to route uh, between the kind of virtual networks, within the virtual network and between the virtual networks. So that's kind of the, to cover the first uh, uh, part. vRouter, vRouters are responsible basically to create and manage those. They're, they're endpoints for those uh, tunnels that are used as overlay tunnels for those virtual networks. So that's kind of the first thing that you need to do. V routers are also connected to physical routers at some, you know, somewhere because they're running, they have to be connected to the physical kind of uh, network. Uh, if you want to connect your virtual network to some external network, to internet, to uh, external like uh, physical devices, the uh, best option is to use the gateway. So right now the gateway is a standard physical router that is used to bridge that, you know, traffic between the virtual networks and your physical networks. There are multiple options to bridge the traffic. So that's a... Uh, if we have a compatible with open uh, so if I have an external open switch and uh, which is serving at my default gateway, can, uh, can you have a connection between the VRAP which is open software and open switch which is implementing let's say, or some other kind of some, some type of gateway is going to be required in between. The, uh, we do support VXLAN style uh, overlay network, so it's, uh, that compatibility is provide, provided. But whenever you're bridging two different styles of networks, you'll need some kind of gateway. We are also kind of working, working on a soft gateway, and that's also an option. So basically, instead of ha having to have a physical router, it's, it is going to soft uh, or a uh, virtual router will be available, but right now it's, it's not. Uh, so kind of looking internally, you know, our uh, implementation within the cloud stack, we use the standard adapters within the cloud stack and we extended uh, Network Guru to, uh, with the Open Contrail Network Guru adapter. 
And we added three more uh, uh, elements, extending the network elements. One is for open control element, one is for uh, VPC element, and one for, is for VSRX element. So VSRX element is really experiment in uh, service chaining, and I'll talk about it before. Uh, SRX is, VSRX is our virtual firewall. And uh, we wanted to experiment and see how the service chaining works in CloudStack. And this is an area where we would like really to develop in as a next step. And any feedback would be, is welcome. Uh, because there are multiple options to implement kind of virtual chaining. I know that there are some, uh, there is, there are some thoughts within the cloud stack to uh, implement policy-based routing that can be used for virtual chaining. And we are open for kind of uh, discussion, definitely, and the, to find the best solution. We already have uh, service chaining implemented within Open Contrail. Now, the, the, the only question is how to uh, map that functionality into uh, CloudStack, and what's the best, what would be the best option to do that. So we'll, we'll, we'll hear more about that uh, in the future. Oh, so from, uh, uh, we are also within the Open Contrail, we exp uh, all the functionality within the Contrail, Open Contrail is exposed through REST APIs. We, uh, automatically create REST, REST, REST APIs at the end of each build. And basically all the functionality that's included in that build is exposed to REST, REST APIs. We make sure it's kind of automatically created so that there, are no, there is no discrep discrepancy between, the, uh, uh, between what we have as functionality and what you have through REST API. So we're using, in this case, we use the standard open control Java library and as for every build, we create Open Contrail Java library to connect to our REST APIs, and we, uh, we create Python-based uh, library that we can use to make it easier to use our REST API. So we use the standard Open Contrail Java library to, uh, to call uh, Contrail REST APIs. And we're kind of running out of time. I'll just skip uh, some slides and, and uh, highlight, you know, two use cases that are uh, most important from our perspective we are working on. Uh, the first one is that you know, hybrid, hybrid cloud I mentioned before, where we can use our kind of virtual network solution to support and deploy multi-tenant uh, uh, cloud and with automated uh, ability to kind of scale to uh, using pub public cloud and you know, move the workloads and so on. The second uh, use case is the service chaining use case. And it's uh, known as a kind of service chaining use case in enterprise environment and uh, NFV or in, uh, for service providers. We have that solution already within the open contrail so that we can service chain multiple virtual services and physical services within the chain because we have built-in policies uh, within open contrast, so we can automatically update those policies uh, dynamically so that route traffic to different services based on tenants and based on other parameters. And this is just summarizing uh, open contrail. So it's open source. Please go uh, to our website and uh, take a look. look. It's a license under Apache 2.0 license, so it's kind of free to use. There is no, you don't have any obligation to contribute or you can use the source code. Source course is available. And this is kind of call of action for you to participate. Uh, please uh, kind of participate. We'll uh, also, we are also planning to participate in the uh, cloud stack and hopefully we'll be kind of working together and partnering uh, in that area. So we're kind of running out of time, but I just wanted to answer any questions if uh, you have. Yes, go ahead. You did mention OpenFlow. Where, Sir? Open where, where do you? Uh, uh, we don't have OpenFlow implementation. We, uh, we, as a Juniper, we support OpenFlow at uh, the hardware level. Uh, from the SDN perspective, we kind of are focused on layer three overlay. That the big thing that's from uh, 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 in kind of long term, that is the solution where everything should be going. 
just from the scaling perspective, it's unless something changes. R right now, that's kind of the feedback that we're getting from our customers also. Yes? What uh, is the coding language you used for the project? Sorry? The coding language, what language do you use? Java? Oh, Java. Java. For, for cloud stack is Java. The open control for our cloud stack integration, we're using Java. The control is implemented in C++. If the and in Python. Yes. So we, we haven't changed IFMAP or XMPP. So those are the standard solutions that we're using. But the open, co uh, open contrail source code is built in C++ and we're out there. Just for efficiency. It's yeah, one, one question. Sure. So um, Zen server ships with Open vSwitch, right? And um, so you guys basically replace Open vSwitch with uh, vRouter. So when CloudStack talks to Zen server, it uses Zappy and communicates with Open vSwitch. So did you guys actually modify Zen server to take care of that? Yeah. I'll let uh, Sashin answer that. So we did modify the uh, Zappy scripts. So there are like WIF scripts where you create the interfaces. So we do modify those scripts to call our own uh, implementations rather than actually creating WIFs in Open vSwitch or something. So you actually create the WIFs? We actually create. So, so uh, yes, we do actually create the WIFs. So it's, Zappy also needs to know about it, but we also need to know about that the WIF got created. Yeah, so I think um, we definitely want to submit it. I think there is, it's still under review, and I think, but we definitely plan to submit it because we don't want to support it. It should go into the open source community. Yeah, we definitely plan to continue uh, contributing to CloudStack. This is, this is just the first uh, implementation. Okay, go ahead. Yes, so we have two user, uh, graphical user interfaces, one for uh, uh, open control uh, and the second one for analytics node. That open control interface provides view into all the virtual networks, the configuration, and you can use it to reconfigure if you want. The analytics uh, UI provides all the kind of analytics view. It can be used for debugging also, so you can see if something goes down and or if the you're reaching some thresholds, but also can be used to just monitor the flows, the traffic, to see what, you know, what is the traffic is going through and whether the, your uh, networks are talking to each other. So, in, sorry. Uh, so, as part of the network policy creation, um, there is there is an ability to actually uh, port or mirror any traffic that you want to a particular mirror instance. I mean, and you could actually be running. Um, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, yeah. yeah, the analyzer software to actually capture those packets and look at the packets that you have. So, you could actually uh, decide to. Uh, monitor a particular flow, you know. But that that functionality, part of the open control functionality, is not exposed into the cloud stack right now. It's, I mean, yeah, it's not exposed as a part of cloud stack right now. But th there are there a are, uh, number of capabilities within policy, within the vRouter, to steer the traffic. And we have a Wireshark image that you can plug in anywhere in the in, within the virtual networks to capture the traffic, to analyze, and it's kind of uh, you can instant, it's, it gets inst instantly created and the traffic is routed uh, through that policy to the Wireshark and you can remove it if, uh, after you finish your uh, debugging. Uh, so just, just, just a point to add that, I mean, that's, that's the feature set that's available in the control, but 
things like spawning a VM to actually do this traffic monitoring has to happen from cloud stack. So there is some kind of integration work that needs to happen before this can be kind of used as is. OK, I guess we're running out of time on getting. So I'll be more than happy to answer, or we'll be more than happy to answer any questions as a follow-up. You can send us an email. Please join the forums and try. I mean, it's, uh, it's free to download. Try the OpenContrail uh, software. Thank you. Thank you.